Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. The U.S. bishops call on the United States government and the entire international community to continue to work for the release of Bishop Alvarez and for a restoration of peace in Nicaragua. The U.S. Bishops International Justice and Peace Chairman released a statement. It says that in another series of actions that have been denounced by the international community, the Nicaraguan government has continued to target the Catholic Church in Nicaragua with abusive and obstructive surveillance, bans of public expressions of faith, and even expulsions from the country. Some of these actions were reported to have taken place during Holy Week and the beginning of Easter. Bishop David J. Malloy of Rockford, chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on International Justice and Peace, issued the following statement regarding the ongoing violations of religious freedom in Nicaragua. As we continue to celebrate the joy of Christ's resurrection during this Easter season, I reaffirm our unwavering solidarity with the bishops, priests, faithful, and all men and women of goodwill in Nicaragua, who are suffering an intensification of the Nicaraguan government's religious persecution. In addition to a ban on traditional Holy Week outdoor celebrations and processions, the faithful have endured consistent police harassment in churches throughout Nicaragua, confiscation of property, as well as the expulsion from the country of two women religious and a priest, the latter for calling for the release of Bishop Rolando Alvarez, who languishes in prison after being unjustly sentenced to 26 years in prison and stripped of his citizenship in February. Despite these extreme hardships, the Nicaraguan faithful, in union with their bishops and priests, have resiliently borne witness to the power of Christ's resurrection, as they attended Easter celebrations in record numbers. I call on the United States government and the entire international community to continue to work for the release of Bishop Alvarez, and for a restoration of peace and the rule of law in Nicaragua. May Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, patroness of the United States and Nicaragua, embrace her children during this difficult time, and illumine them with the light of the risen Christ. The Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi visited a Catholic cathedral at Easter in solidarity with persecuted Christians. The PM made a visit to the Sacred Heart Church as a gesture of concern for Christians. He released several Twitter messages about the visit with pictures and video. He hoped Holiday would raise the spirit of harmony in our society. Father Thelicott told Asia News, a positive fact that recognizes India's pluralism. But now Christians also expect him to come out of his silence on growing anti-Christian intolerance and control extremist elements within his party. Asia News called it a rare and significant gesture for India. PMO Narendra Modi was welcomed by Archbishop Anil Joseph Thomas Kauto and spoke to the faithful, he also lit a candle in front of the image of the risen Christ. Afterwards, he planted a tree in the garden of the complex. Earlier in the morning Modi had already posted greetings to Christians on Easter Day with a tweet on his profile. In the text he wrote that he hoped this special occasion will deepen the spirit of harmony in our society. May it inspire people to serve society and help the marginalized. On this day let us remember the pious thoughts of Christ. The Catholic Archdiocese of Delhi welcomed the visit as mentioned in a statement reported by India's official ANI news agency, Cathedral Pastor Father Francis Swaminathan called it a great message. India, is a country where unfortunately confessional divisions are fueled by Hindu nationalists that often make headlines. India has recently surpassed China as the most populated country in the world. There are over 20 million Catholics in the country. Pope Francis, gave a fragment from the True Cross, to King Charles III, of the United Kingdom, as a coronation gift. King Charles will be crowned King of the United Kingdom on May 6. Pope Francis has donated a relic from the True Cross of Christ as a coronation gift. According to the Church in Wales, the Cross of Wales, a new processional cross presented by His Majesty King Charles III as a centenary gift to the Church in Wales, will lead the coronation procession at Westminster Abbey on 6 May. In a significant ecumenical gesture, the Cross of Wales will incorporate a relic of the True Cross, the personal gift of Pope Francis to His Majesty the King to mark the coronation. Inscribed with words from St. David's last sermon, the Cross of Wales will be blessed by the Archbishop of Wales, Andrew John, at Holy Trinity Church, Lendidno, 
Today, April 19th. The gift of the cross was commissioned by His Majesty the King, as Prince of Wales, to celebrate the centenary of the Church in Wales. Words from the last sermon of St. David are chased on the back of the cross in Welsh, which translates as, Be joyful. Keep the faith. Do the little things. Welcoming the gift on behalf of the Church in Wales, Archbishop Andrew said, We are honored that His Majesty has chosen to mark our centenary with a cross that is both beautiful and symbolic. Its design speaks to our Christian faith, our heritage, our resources and our commitment to sustainability. We are delighted too that its first use will be to guide their majesties into Westminster Abbey at the coronation service. Washington State rejects an amendment to a bill which intends to force priests to violate the seal of confession. The Washington Senate passed the bill, SB 5280, in March, which included an exemption for clergy penitent privilege. Then it was sent to the Washington House for a vote. The House added an amendment to the Senate version that excluded the clergy penitent exemption. That version of the bill passed the House on the 11th of April. Bishop Thomas Daly of Spokane released a statement in response. He wrote, on Monday of this week, the Washington State Senate rejected a House amendment to Bill No. SB 5280 which intends to force priests to violate the seal of confession if child abuse is revealed within the celebration of the sacrament. I am particularly grateful for the leadership of Senator Mike Patton, Senator Judy Warnick, and Senator Phil Fortunato on this matter. The legislature should strive to make good law which is able to be followed and enforced. Senators Patton, Warnick, and Fortunato, as well as several of their colleagues, are very aware of this important duty. The state of Washington is not the first governing body to attempt to criminalize our commitment to keep the seal of confession sacred. History is replete with examples of kings, queens, dictators, potentates, and legislators who have attempted to have the seal of confession violated through law, coercion, or fiat. All have failed. I want to assure you that your shepherds, bishop and priests, are committed to keeping the seal of confession, even to the point of going to jail. The sacrament of penance is sacred and will remain that way in the Diocese of Spokane. For those legislators who question our commitment to the safety of your children, simply speak with any mom who volunteers with a parish youth group, any Catholic school teacher, any dad who coaches a parochial school basketball team or any priest, deacon or seminarian, and you will learn firsthand about our solid protocols and procedures. The Diocese of Spokane maintains an entire department at the Chancery, the Office of Child and Youth Protection, staffed by professional laypeople. We have a zero-tolerance policy regarding child sexual abuse. Our goal is do everything within our power to keep your children safe while we attempt to lead them to know and love Jesus Christ who commanded, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. As the legislative process regarding this matter continues to unfold, I intend on keeping you informed and updated. An important element to the greatness of America is our constitutional commitment to religious freedom. Please pray that our legislators will create sound law which reflects this foundational principle of our country. Asking for the prayers of Our Lady of Lord, I remain, in Christ, Most Reverend Thomas A. Daly Bishop of Spokane, Washington. Watch your program every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.